everybody. Um, just want to thank you all for coming tonight. I really do appreciate you um, coming to listen to me speak tonight. It is my first time of doing this, so I'm a little bit nervous, but um, I'll settle into that. <laughs> um, for those of you who don't know me, my name's Rosemary Gallagher. I'm an Aussie from Melbourne. I've been living in London now for about 15, nearly 16 years, and I think I can nearly call myself um, a Londoner, but if my mum heard me say that, I think she'd have a heart attack. <laughs> um, I'm a professional tarot reader and angel intuitive, and I'm um, also a lyricist as well, and I'm hoping one day to write a number one song, and one day perhaps win a Grammy or an Oscar or something like that. <laughs> um, I'm an author of a self-published book, which I have here, which is called I Listen to My Heart, and now I'm a proud owner and author of my beautiful book called I Am You Are, which is published by Watkins, and um, it's a lovely little gift book, um, full of positive affirmations really, the A to Z of, um, uh, yeah, just single word affirmations, the A to Z um, affirmations. <laughs> um, it's, a, um, it's a nice little gift book to give to, you know, a friend or somebody, but also to let them know how special they are, but also to let you know how special you are. So I think it's a good book, a lovely little book to buy for yourself, to be honest with you. It's the inner and outer selves coming together as one. <laughs> this little book came about um, over a glass of wine, actually, and um, I didn't really have any intentions of sort of doing a book like this, but... Um, I was out with a friend and she was meeting a friend of hers and um, we got talking about what I do for a living and she sort of said to me, well, you know, what message is it that you're trying to get across to people? And I said, well, I really want um, to be able to help people to learn a little bit more how to, you know, trust their instinct, listen to their, you know, the higher selves and to trust the universe, basically, and also to um, learn how to love yourself. So that was my, that's what I tried to get across there. And then we got talking about, you know, uh, affirmations and the power of positive thinking. And um, by the second glass of wine, this little book was created. And so I walked home with like, you know, oh, wow, I think I'm going to be doing a little, you know, book. So that's how that came about, which um, gets me on to, you know, like everything happens for a reason. Never say never. And um, what is meant for you won't pass by because this is how, what's really happened for me. Everything seems to just happen <laughs> and I haven't really gone looking for anything. Um, I thought I'd start at the beginning and just how I found my um, spiritual voice first off and then just sort of move in quickly how I found my creative voice. And the when I was younger I always felt very, very protected and I, you know, grew up in a family of seven brothers and sisters so I had lots of, you know, protection. But I also felt this very strong spiritual protection, which I believe was my guardian angel. Um, and as I got older, it got stronger, my communication. But the very first message that I ever heard um, was when I was about 14. And um, I remember my mum's friend came over for a coffee, as she used to do. And they got talking about things. And my, she said to my mum, you know, you know, Betty, when are you going to let those girls, you know, date, start dating, because there's five girls. And mum sort of said, well, I think at the age of 16 it would be a good, a good time. And I was like, oh, wow, so excited, because I was 14 and already in love with Angus Young from ACDC. So I was like, oh, wow, you know, I'm going to be able to go and date and marry Angus and do all sorts of wonderful things. And um, But then as I was walking out the front door, because I was going to meet a friend, I, I got this voice that said, or heard this voice that said, that's not going to happen to you. You'll be different from everybody else. And I remember thinking, oh, why not? <laughs> you know, why won't that happen to me? And then, I, you know, my little insecure self came out, you know, you know, you're too fat, you're too ugly, you know, all of those little things that happened to you at, you know, that sort of age. And anyway, I promptly forgot about it because, you know, I just did. You know, I went on through life just, you know, doing whatever I was doing. Um, I left school at a young age because I wasn't really interested in studying. That wasn't me. You know, I just wanted to get out and you know, be free, travel the world, earn money, wear nice clothes, do all those sorts of things. Um, so, you know, and my, I didn't have any huge ambition or any great, you know, desire to be anything. So I wasn't, um, you know, wanting to be anything. <laughs> I just wanted to have fun and, you know, have a good time. And I had this, but I did have a big dream, and that was to travel. And the second one was, well, I think it was the first one, was to meet the man of my dreams. So, you know, I was looking for love, and I wanted, you know, I had this feeling that, you know, this man, I was going to meet him, and I was going to, he was going to be successful and, and you know, you know, perhaps wealthy, <laughs> and live the high life, and I would just sort of be, you know, 
with him and travelling on him with him and his journey and I'd be the good wife, you know, which all sounds a little bit pathetic when I think back about that. But at the time, you know, that was kind of what I wanted and we all were looking for, a, you know, love and a partner and I'm sure when we were all young we were all sort of thinking like that. Maybe not everyone, but, you know, most of us. Anyway, so um, so my my whole thing was, you know, looking for this man, which I know, as I said, can sound a bit pathetic. But um, it was... As life, I didn't put my life on hold for this guy, but I kept on sort of, you know, searching for him, searching for him, and I never found him, you know, and seriously, he took forever to come into my life, and I finally met him at the age of 45, 46, but, you know, in, so in that time, I'm still single, and I'm still looking for him, and I'm still doing nothing for me, you know, I was sort of had this always looking on the outer instead of going in, you know, and I wasn't picking up that message that the universe was trying to say, you know, listen, girl, you know, this, you've got more to do. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, just looking, looking, you know, and just get going on with my life. A happy life, by the way. I wasn't miserable that there was no man in my life for this long. But my love life seemed to be really, really different. While everybody else was going, going along and sort of breaking up and having, you know, heartbreaks and getting engaged and weddings and babies, I'm still like, oh, you know, I still haven't been in love. I still haven't met that man, you know. But I felt that my angels were really, really protecting me. And I knew that they were protecting me for a reason. And at times I was very frustrated with that too, by the way. I used to sort of have chats and sort of say, you know, back off, yeah, give me some space. Let me go there. Let me be like a normal human being. And I had never, I had forgotten that message that told me you weren't going to be like everybody else, you know. And anyway, so then I... Um, and that was my sister who brought to my attention how I used to always talk about the angels. And she told me about there was this angel expert coming into town. And she said, why didn't you go and listen and have see what she's got to say? And I was like, well, you know, OK. So I went along. And anyway, so, you know, learned a little bit more about the angels and how to talk to them, how to look for signs and whatnot. And this was by my mid-30s. And I ended up... Um, so, that was, so that was the mid-30s. And then I was still... By this point, I really was looking for something more, and I, was, I got to about 39, and I started to think there was something really missing in my life, and, you know, this man wasn't here, as I said, and I was still having great time, and life was great, and I was still very happy, because I was born an optimist, so, I, you know, I really wasn't a miserable person while I was still waiting for this dream to materialise. Um, but then my, another, a friend came over, she said to me, you know, and I, I said, you know, we were talking outside, it was a hot night, and having a champagne, and she's, we were talking, and I said, you know, what are we going to do? We're still single. And she was like, oh, no. And she said, well, you know, Rose, if I was you, I would um, grab that Irish passport of yours and get over to London. And I was kind of like, oh, I don't really want to go to London. I'd been to London before and when I was young and went on a backpacking trip and had fun, of course, but didn't have any money. So, you know, it was a bit, and it was winter, you know, so it wasn't my big dream to run back there. But anyway, I did feel that, you know, something had to change. And because it was coming up to my 40th birthday on the next year, and it was the year 2000, I thought, well, you know, this, that's quite a, you know, auspicious sort of time. I thought, maybe I might just sort of change my life. So I, she planted that seed in my head, and I sort of said to the angels, OK, I'm going to give you six months to see if we can do something here. If I'm not meant to go to London, then bring this man to me. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll you know, take that as a sign. Anyway, of course, it never came. So, of course, I just ended up, you know, packing up to go and, and went off to London and so got here at the age of 40. But on my, I had a, a going away party and one of my other friends gave me as a gift a pack of tarot cards. So that was sort of like, oh, I said, you know, Robin, where's the, where's the, um, instructions and she said to said to me well that's something that you'll have to go and find you know and I thought oh okay so me and my little tarot cards off we went to London and I got here and in the meantime I'm still really talking to the angels because I really you know saying I'm on my own here I'm 40 you know help me find a good job and make new friends and things like that and so that's you know that happened everything just fell into place beautifully so it was really lovely and I started I think I bought some angel cards and I started playing with my angel cards and I was connecting more and more with the angelic world. So my spiritual side started to really, um, you know, starting to really tune into it and I was enjoying it. And, and I felt more and more that I was being pulled in that direction, but I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And then, um, you know, I'm, you know, about 44, still single. <laughs> and then my another friend came over and she, it was my another birthday, it was looming and another friend came over and we had, she gave me a present and it was a, a subscription to the Psychic College in, in London. And it was, which was literally around the corner from where I was living. And she, um, when she gave it to me, I was like, oh, okay, that's nice, you know, now I'm going to have to go and do a course, you know. And I wasn't really that good at doing things like studying or anything. So um, anyway, I looked into the, you know, the courses there, and they had a, a um, professional tarot reading. 
look at the course and I thought, oh, you know, I'm going to do something. I want to be professional. That's what I want to be. Which I think is quite funny because when I was young, the last thing I wanted was to do anything that was professional and yet that was the word that pulled me. Professional tarot reader. And I was like, oh, yeah. Anyway, so I ended up doing the course and finished that 30 weeks later or whatever. And um, at the end of it, the teacher said to me, you know, oh, you, you're a real natural. You are. And I'm like me a natural you know I didn't think I was a natural at anything and because I didn't really think I had any any talent to be honest any creative talent or spiritual talent so it was sort of a little bit of a shock for me that this was sort of happening and then um, so then I started just to do tarot readings and you know and had got did a website and got you know got a little business running which was really quite good and then um, then in walks you know this, this man who changed my life, you know, so you never know what's going to happen and everything does happen for a reason. But it was one night I was sort of getting really fed up with um, the universe and the angels and I was kind of thinking, you know, this is, this is just enough now. I'm, I'm 45, I'm trying to do something, I'm moving into this spiritual thing. Um, you know, where's this man that I know is out there? Because I always knew that there was somebody there and I just knew that when I saw him I would know and it would all be, you know, happy ever after type of stuff but it never is um, anyway so one day I said to the angels I was going out and I said now listen you really have to um, do something so I really want you to bring in this um, this man I don't care if it's the wrong time I don't care but let me just see him let me see this man anyway so be careful what you ask for because uh, that's exactly what happened so I turned around that one night and I was in, in the pub having a drink and I could feel something. I just felt this urge to turn around. I turn around and there's this guy staring at me. And this guy had ha actually worked in the same building that I was at, had been in. And I used to see him around every now and then. And I used to have this voice that would say to me, oh, he's nice. And I'd go, no, he's not. Yes, he is. No, he's not. Yes, he is. And I'd have this back and forth conversation. And I was just thinking it was to myself. But anyway, that happened every you know, few times that I saw him around the building. So when I turned around and saw him smiling at me, I was kind of like, that's that guy. Oh, my God. Anyway, so he came around and cut a long story short, you know, we, you know, he was going to take me out. And, you know, I was very excited. And I went home and shuffled my angel cards and, you know, got, you know, worth waiting for. And I'm like, oh, yes, finally, you know, I found this man. Um, anyway, did he ring? No. So he didn't ring me. But I was kind of like, you know, a bit you know, quite disappointed because it felt really right. Anyway, to cut a long story short, we did end up going out again because we, you know, saw one another again, obviously, because we were meant to. And, um, you know, from that night onwards, I realised then that I'd actually met um, my twin flame, twin, twin soulmate. So that, for me, changed my whole life. And I don't know if you've heard of a twin flame. If you haven't, um, it is a very um, powerful connection. Um, and what it is is when you were first created, um, you know, we've, we've, do, you have, do you know about Twin Flames, anybody? No? Yeah? No? <laughs> okay, I'm going to give you a very, very, you know, uh, sort of just very easy, small <laughs> little One soul split into two, masculine and feminine energies. And each soul went off and travelled many, many lifetimes, doing their thing, you know, evolving, learning, doing whatever. And the plan is that you are meant to then come back at one, at one particular lifetime, come together again as one and join together. Um, and it's a reunion, it's a twin flame, a twin flame reunion, but that is a very, um, but when that happens, it's a very powerful, powerful energy and it can be very, ups well, it, t it turns your life upside down because what it is, it's a soulful, spiritual um, relationship um, and whilst it's supposed to be a you know, relationship and physical as well, it purely is a soulful, spiritual one. So usually when you meet a twin, one one or two can be, but one is always on a spiritual path already, and I had already started on that, and I already was getting lots of messages anyway about sort of this connection. And um, and the other one is usually going to be quite not ready, well, not ready for it, so they will run from it. So with the twin flame thing, you have a runner and a chaser. Of course, I was the chaser, and he was the runner, and he was running pretty fast, you know. <laughs> anyway, so I, for, for years, we're up to 10 years, can I say, <laughs> um, you know, have been... It, it, going crazy basically but I'm, I'm only half that time I was going crazy the other half I got the what the whole message is about the twin flames and that journey really is about the the journey to oneself so that twin flame meeting is actually meant to take you into to, to yourself to look at yourself you know work through what it is that you have to um, to to, you know, to better yourself in some way now mine was to actually find a sense of um, self love and self-worth and because that's what I was lacking and I had no 
you know, no real passion to do anything. And yet the universe knew that I was meant to be doing something more than what I had been doing up till that, that time of meeting this guy. So, so he, but that took me three years to realise that I was supposed to go within, you know, and work it out myself, you know. But I did, and again, it was somebody else. Because when this guy came, you know, it turned my world upside down because I knew with all certainty that this guy was... He was this one, but but he was running. So I was sort of just waiting for him to wake up and come and get me, you know. So every day I'm like, no, to maybe today he will, maybe today he will. But my spiritual journey escalated because I had to actually um, go looking for help, you know, because I all of a sudden I've got all this feeling of knowingness and certainty going on inside of me and yet I didn't because it wasn't logical this guy's running and yet I'm feeling like we're meant to be together you know it was a this reawakening um so so eventually I, you know I was going up to the angels and everything help 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 going having psychic readings and doing whatever because I needed to get answers and I needed to know that I wasn't crazy because it really can you know just consume you you know 24 7 they're on your mind they're in your your body nearly you know anyway so I hadn't tapped into any creative talent by this point, and um, my sister, I rang her up, you know, after probably, you know, the, I'm up to year three here, or whatever, she was sick of me, Rosemary, why don't you write it down, what you're feeling, why don't you let out your feelings on a piece of paper, um, anyway, so I said, I can't write, you know, because one of my favourite words was, I can't, I can't, I can't, you know, it was so much easier to say that, um, and anyway, so I did end up just sort of writing down how we met, and how I felt, and this and that, and then about a year later, I, I reread read it, and, um, I thought it was quite funny, and I thought, oh, because one good thing was, I, I was born with a hu sense of humour and I could always laugh at myself, so I kind of thought, oh yeah, and I started to read it, and I thought, oh, this could make a good movie, and I saw this movie like Bridget Jones or Sex in the City or, you know, something like that, and then I said to a friend, I said, oh, you know, I, you know, I like my little story, and she, and she said, well, perhaps you might want to write a book first, because that's usually how things happen, and I said, well, I can't do it, so I'll have to get a, you know, a a ghostwriter to do it. So I went down that channel and this ghostwriter came back with a few, um, uh, what do you call it, um, chapters. And um, I was like, oh, I don't think I'd write that. You know, it's not what I'd say. So then I just sat there and I thought, what would I say? I'd say this. And so I started type. And before I knew it, I was just typing and I wrote about four chapters of this book, which I had never written anything in my whole entire life. And so I was kind of like, oh my God, maybe I might be able to do this. Maybe I do have a little bit of a talent. Anyway, so then I, um, so I said to the woman, you know, how about you edit it and I'll write the chapters. And so she said, yeah, great idea. So within two and a half months, I wrote, you know, I wrote my book. I listened to my heart <laughs> and I'd never written anything before. Um, so once, and then you know, obviously, you know, I end up going down the self-publishing route, which is which is great. Um, but you know, and then with that, because I saw it as a movie, I thought I needed a soundtrack. And a friend at work, he was a musician, so I said, "Hey, how about you write a song?" So you know, I've got this movie, big movie plan going on here. And so he did that, and he came back with the song and the lyrics. And I was kind of like, "Nice song, but not my type of lyrics." But he said, "Well, you write them." And I was like, I can't write lyrics, you know. And of course, I had to write them. So I sat down and said, well, you know, what do I want to say about all of this, you know? So I wrote this, you know, thing. I wrote this song in about half an hour, and I was like, oh my God, look what I've written, you know. I went once again, you know, so excited that I'd written something that actually sounded okay. So he ended up recording that, and that so that was my very first song. And I actually thought that was a fluke. So I thought, well, maybe I better write, you know, another one. So then I wrote another one, and then I wrote another one. I wrote about five or six in that one particular week. And I was like, where is all this coming from, you know? And I rang my friend once, and I was telling her, and she said, I said, you know, where is it all coming from? And she said, it's coming from your heart. And I thought, oh, my God, that is so right. It's coming from my heart. This guy had woken all of these feelings inside of me and tapped into this creative, um, in my creative voice. So he really was my muse, you know? And anyway, so then... Um, so, you know, so then that was that. So what did I ended up, you know, discovering through all of this is that, you know, he's still gone. He's, you know, he's by this point, he's moved, you know, back to wherever he came from, you know. And, um, you know, but it, it didn't, the feeling and that I still have for him still is still very much there because it just doesn't go away. But what it was, I still did what I had to do on this twin flame journey. I did go in by myself. So whilst I lost myself 
for quite a while in this fellow, I actually ended up finding me. So that was the you know the greatest gift of all, as far as I'm concerned. So now, you know, I, I, I'm I'm somebody. You know, I'm not, I'm just not somebody's daughter or sister or friend. I'm I'm a published author now, and I'm a lyricist, and you know, and I've, I've got my own business doing tarot cards, and I've got you know I'm free. I've got this freedom now to do whatever I want to. And I go and live in you know a friend in New York. I go and stay with her, and I can go and work anywhere in the world doing what the work I do now. And so all of this happened because this person came into my life to help me, to help me find me. And that's what a twin is also meant to do, is to help their, 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 their counterpart on their journey. So he has done that, you know, and also you ask, I, I thought meant to get together, but you know, as I said, we're, we're up to 10 years and we're, we're not there yet, but that doesn't matter. Man. Who knows what tomorrow will bring, you know, so, so we'll just sort of wait and see. But so that's sort of how I started out in my journey and my spiritual, and found my creative voice and my spiritual voice. So it really is that life is, you know, anything can happen at any time, you know, if you're open to it and everything really does happen for a reason. And, you know, I think if people can just really trust more in that you you end up living a really much more peaceful happier life trusting that the universe is actually going to look after you now of course you can't can't just sit there and do nothing go oh yeah you know it's all going to just come to me you know you have to participate in life and and make things happen but um you know generally speaking for from what i could what, what, what i've experienced you know it really is you know a wonderful journey if you go with the flow and start really um you know, just allowing and trusting that the universe will give you what you deserve, you know. And I always ask the universe now, you know, for everything that's meant for my highest and greatest good. You know, the, the best the best man, the best work, the best friends, the best of everything, you know. And I really can relax knowing that, you know, they will, they, it does happen, it does, you know. And anything can happen, you know, when, you, when you're open. It's just good. So... That's that's my story, my brief story. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> but do I prefer my life before him or after him? I prefer my life a zillion percent now. My life now is just, it's wonderful. I feel so blessed because seriously, I, I it's just so easy and it's so lovely. And but the thing is, I'm I'm I've, I've got I'm me. You know I'm you know as I said, I'm doing something now for me and every. It's just so satisfying now. Whereas before, I was just floating around. As I said, I was going to be living somebody else's life. That's a that's terrible to think that that's what I was going to, that I was thinking of doing that, mm -hmm. you know. And I was thinking that still for a long time, which is terrible. And you know, I, I'm I'm shocked. I'm going to whack myself. For that. <laughs> what was I thinking? <laughs> but you know, it's 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 what so happened. happens at the right. Why it didn't happen before? It, because everything happens at the right time. I I was meant to be 45, 46. There was absolutely this. I was meant to be a late bloomer, you know. I really and truly was, and um, you know, I've learned you know many things along the way, and I had lots of fun, you know. I think I was a, I think in this soul's journey, I was allowed to have freedom. I think I was allowed to enjoy myself. I think perhaps you know, in a past life, um, you know, I may have had a lot of responsibility. I may have even had lots of children, you know. And this life, it was like, you know what? You know, this one can be your nearly sort of pure, you know what I mean, in the sense, because I haven't had a broken heart, I haven't been in love, no, and that's crazy, there's nothing wrong with me, you know, I don't have two heads, you know, and all these other people, I sort of see getting boyfriends, and as I said, and I'm like, what is wrong with me, you know, um, but, but once I realised that the twin flame came in, I could say, oh, I see what was going on here, you know, and that's only something, as years went on, I started to get, learn, understand more and more about that, you know, that twin flame connection, and how it is about you, not about them. And once you get it together, they hopefully they're sort of working on you know parallel too. They're doing the work on themselves. But you know, one day I'll have maybe an answer, maybe not. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. I live for the moment now. And that was the other thing. I was always looking into the future. You know, I went to a hundred zillion psychics. You know, and I'm one. And it's so funny that I'm one myself. You know, you know, it's just so funny. Um, and I still enjoy going to them. You know, but I was always looking for the future instead of in the now. And, and we all know that you've got to live in the moment. You know, you've got it. We're here, and that's all that matters. And everything else will take care of itself. And it really and truly does. You know, so um, so I'm happy. <laughs> I'm going back to my beautiful love story of when I was young. <laughs> you know, we're going to live happily ever after, of course. No, I'm only kidding. Um, well, I think it's going to be, abs you know, I mean, I think it's just, I think it's going to be absolutely perfect, you know, in the sense that the we'll be coming together to learn as a couple, as a set of, 
as a as two set, you know two different individuals. You know, we'll be a couple, and we'll just have to work. It'll just work. You know, it'll, it'll just work. I have no idea. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know actually. Yeah, you know, because you're living in the moment. I'm right? living in the moment, and I and I don't really sort of um, I don't care. And you know what? He may have free. You know, he, not he may have free will. He does have free will. He may never come back. He may choose not to. You know, and it may be the soul's contract that he, you know, that he's not meant to. You know, I don't know, and it doesn't matter anymore because I'm really at peace with it and I've surrendered it. You know, there's not a day that doesn't go by where he's not the whole thing's not the energy, you know, it's all around me, you know, but I can't live there anymore, you know, I have to, I, I had to let that go and I, I'm really, really at peace with it. And finally, finding that peace with this was um, just such a relief, you know, it's so, it's just so much better, because for 10 years, I'm telling you, he, he's been on my mind, you know, everything, it's just everything he did was like him. But luckily, you know, I've got these lovely songs, and I just found out the other day that, oh, yesterday, that one of my songs was semi-finalist in one of the competitions that I sent it in for, and a couple of my songs are being considered for different artists, and, you know. Um, so, you know, I'm doing quite well with the music, and I'm, I'm convinced I'm going to win a Grammy. <laughs> and the movie, of course, you know. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot, I mean, my journey, to be honest, has just started. So I'm I can't wait for what's coming. Always say... It's like with any relationship and people going through breakups or whatever. One day you wake up and you go, I'm over this, or I'm not doing this anymore. It doesn't feel good for me anymore, you know? Um, and I think the more I, I became engrossed and involved in what I was actually doing for me, which was what I was meant to be doing anyway, was it just made sense. You know, I just kind of thought, well, you, it's not about you. It's actually about me. The hardest thing is, though, for me, <laughs> is that everything I do is actually about him. The book, <laughs> the songs, <laughs> I've written a sequel, and it's the you know the sequel of the first book. So everything is about him. So whilst I'm trying to push him to one side, he still is my work. So it's been tricky. <laughs> but I'm getting there. <laughs> so that's, that's that. Thank you to him, you know? I really do. And hopefully I get to see him again and, and do that, you know? And I think we will, you know? Either that or I'll contact yeah, Because now I'm happy. You, uh, have I written a song? <laughs> I haven't written anything because I'm at, you know, I, I'm coming from a different angle and I've got to think, oh, how do I write about a, being happy? <laughs> you know, so I, I, I actually haven't put a lot of thought into it, but I have to really try and, and write differently because I, it's, it's, that's gone. I'm, I flushed that out of my system, you know, so it's, um, it's interesting. But it's, it's a tricky journey, the twin flame journey, so I don't know if anyone is going through one. But, um, you know, you need, you've got to do the work on yourself and you've got to let go of the ego. If you, you cannot have a twin flame relationship and if you're working with ego, it's got to go. It really truly does. And that's the, you know, the moral of the story, of the twin flame story. You've got to stop working with your ego. You've got to come to, from that spiritual place of, of your soul and that sense of, you know, awakening. It's very empowering. <laughs> so I feel empowered. Yes, at the moment. At the moment. <laughs> it doesn't sound like you ever had a new issue. Because you see, as I said, I didn't, I had no ambitions. I didn't push myself. I had no expectations for me. I mean, that's terrible. I should have had something. That's the other end. Yeah, so, yeah, so it was that, you know. And so that's what, you know, everyone's got different um, issues, you know. So, um, and yeah, so even sort of, me sort of thinking all I wanted was a man, it's kind of nearly a contradiction because actually I was kind of independent and I was doing my own thing. It was like I didn't, I didn't sort of really act like I was somebody who really wanted a man and I didn't go throwing myself on, you know, men because I needed a man. I was very emotionally fulfilled, you know, and that was, I think, another part of the problem is that I was sort of this contradiction. I wanted something and it was like, unless you're perfect, yeah, I mean, don't bother, you know, or when I say perfect, unless you were that person that I felt that, that real feeling for. So, um, so yeah, I just push people away. I know that. Anyway, what was what will be will be. <laughs> I'm obviously, you know, here, <laughs> alone. <laughs> Beautiful because you know it's it's simple. <laughs> this little book, you know, it's it doesn't require you to memorize a whole, you know, sentence or anything. It's just one word, and you don't need a whole heap of words to 
to keep yourself, you know, affirming to yourself how positive, you know, you, using these affirmations. A single word does it all. You know, I am, what am I? Oh, I am, all I'm getting is joyful, <laughs> you know. You know, it just, that's it. That's all I have to say. I am joyful. Yes, you are joyful. You know, if you tell, you, if you put that out there, you know, people are, are going to respond and go, yeah, she is pretty happy, you know, joyful, you know. Not that you're going around saying it to everybody, oh, I'm joyful, you know, but if you come across happy, people will say, you know, you know, that rose over there, she's, she's a really joyful person. <laughs> you know, so you, you know, whatever you give out, you know, will, will, comes back, you know, and so it's up to you, you know. So these, you know, these little affirmations, I, I think keep everything simple. I'm not about any, anything, I don't like anything being difficult, so... So even when this twin flame thing happened, I was like, oh, excuse me, <laughs> it wasn't meant to be like this, this is all too difficult, you know. Um, but, yeah, no, it really is, life is about putting the energies into the basics and letting go of the excess, and that's, that truly is if you want a nice, you know, happy life. And self-love is once you get to that point of self-love. And so that's the great thing that I've got about this, is this sense of self-love, you know, and it really is... It's the best place ever to be, I, I can't even believe it. <laughs> and that's so peaceful and so joyful and happy you know you, you you really are fulfilled and nothing gets to you because it can't stick because ego makes things stick because you get hurt or you get angry you know or whatever but when you got self-love you go oh that's all right you'll get over it or you know whatever it might be you know <laughs> so um yeah so you know, I, I couldn't be i'm in a really good place and as i said i've only just begun so i'll break into song in a minute <laughs>